doing in, out there? It's cold, it's raining, it's dark, there might be wolves. Come in here, come on. Wow. Right, so, my mate Doug has his van. My mate Doug's van failed its MOT, and the first time round, I had a poke about it, and I said, this is knackered, Doug, there's a problem, I can't, there's so much welding, I'm just not going to do it. But then we looked at the value of transits, and the problem is they've gone right up because of the pandemic. So here we are, back on the ramp after condemning it, and there's a lot of welding. I've already done quite a lot, a lot of it, but I've got more to do. So... Before we get started, I just want to run through a couple of safety things and things I'm going to be using because I will be wearing welding gloves to try not to burn myself too much. And when I can find them, I'll be wearing safety specs, and I recommend you do that too. So, why on earth am I recording this? Well, there's a lot of content out there, a lot of people talking about stuff which it's not that interesting. And I thought, well, actually, repairing a transit, getting it back on the road at the point that it's kind of marginal might be interesting. So. It's on the ramp, I'm here. Simon's had the decency to turn out and hold the camera, so we thought we'd do a few videos just to talk through kind of what I'm doing. So, before we dive in, a lot of the stuff I'm gonna be doing is with this here, which is the welder. Not the big red thing, it's the little yellow one we're using. So this is for doing, I don't know, girders and stuff. Whereas this does little bodywork things, so it's a little welder we're going to be using. So that's absolutely key. And then over here, we have other tools which we're going to be using and seeing a lot of. Nice scurfing disc, so sandpaper on there, cuts things back really nicely. Cutting disc, wafer thin to get into things. Um, there's also an air chisel, which is a recent acquisition, which I'm quite excited about bending things unintentionally with. So uh, I'm probably going to be doing things I don't want to with that. Uh, and then over here on the ramp, where there's all sorts of litter, because I've already been going at this. Cut brushes to grind stuff back again. And then over here, another really useful tool, that layer cutoff tool. So we do a reasonably well equipped workshop. It's got most of what we need. It's gonna come down to my skills and whether I can do it. Right, so what we're gonna do is have a look at this sill. Because you can see there are great big holes. Now I've cut these back. This is one of the first things we did when we were looking at it. Actually cut them back. It's not just the outside sill, it's the inside sill. We'll look at that in a bit. But to save forming all this metal, which would have taken ages, because it's got a lovely curve on it from production, I actually went to buy some parts um, on that internet and bought a replacement sill panel. So here we have a replacement sill panel. I bought a couple of panels. So we've got that one. We've got this which is the inner sill for the front, which we'll be dicing down later. And there's this one, which I've already cut up. And this is the joy of repair panels. I don't need these bits, but I had to buy all this to do the rear cord for the van. Because when you're dealing with MOT failures, you've got to repair what are called prescribed areas. Prescribed areas are 300 mil of a suspension mounting point or a seat belt mount, other important structures in the vehicle. So if you are rusted out around those, you've got to actually get the metal back, get it good so that it's good enough for the MOT man to say yes. So what we're gonna do first up is take this over to the bench after I've measured this up. I'm gonna dice this down because again, we're not using the whole piece. We don't need to replace the whole sill. I'm gonna do a section here and then a section here and the two big ones and then probably by the looks of it a bit here. And then we'll talk about inside sills as well. Okay, right. Take this to the workbench, get the tape measure. Okay, so having walked round here, I now realise, tape measure, measure the section. Back round we go. About half this is going to be me walking around the barn, trying to find things I've put down, forgetting where they are. So the point of not doing this live is that we can cut most of that out. We won't though. Anyway, first section I'm going to have, I'm going to have up to this seam here, and then I'm going to have down, I was going to go to here, but then I did some grinding and, oh look, holes. So, I'm going to go from this line here down to about here. I'm going to have to be careful here because this is, there's a pinch point here where the water collects. So it will be a bit rusty. We'll see how we get on. But the bit I'm going to cut is going to be, we're going to go for 60 mil wide and then we're going to go up to 300 mil long. So I'm going to go and bite that out of that section over there. Why do we measure in millimeters? Can we not measure in inches again now? Uh, well, we could do, but 
I don't want to. So, and that will be the end of that. We're sticking to millimetres. It's what we know. Children of the 70s who grew up through the metric system after it was adopted. Right, so cut this off. Don't need all this bit that's designed to be stitched in. Just going to go for the bit here. You can see the flange at the bottom, so that's the bottom. Um, so I'm probably going to just hack it out to start with. And we're going to go 300 millimetres, which is uh, just there and just there. Right, so. Goggles. Right, so before I cut that down, now we've got the basic bit here, I'm just going to run the grinder along here to see whether I can actually find any problems that we're going to encounter, whether it is too thin to weld, because we can do magic, but we can't weld air to air. So, let's have a quick look. So we're back to clean metal on there, which is where I'm going to stitch that in there. And that all looks okay. I know this is okay, although it's pretty thin. It's not completely wasted. This is probably going to go. I'm going to cut that out. But then we should be able to stitch it in okay there, up there, across the top, and back down there. And that'll get us a nice little repair panel in there. So I'm going to cut it off now along that joint there. And then I'm probably going to come up here and just dice it along that curve as well. Because we don't need that. It's just going to get in the way. Right, back to the cutting disc. Okay, so I'm going to clamp this so I can just dice it up on the bench here without too much elbow and desperately trying to hold it. So I'm going to get that flange there. These clamps we actually bought on Amazon, I think, several years ago. And when we bought them, Danny turned up with them and made them. Up, and he said, they're far too small. We'll never use them for anything. Of course, we use them for pretty much everything because they are small, disposable, crappy clamps, which you never dispose of. You just keep on using them and using them and using them. Right, so. so hang on a minute, but you've got a perfectly serviceable vice. Vice. In a bit of the wrong angle, I won't be able to get the grinder in nice and tight on that. On this, what I'm going to do here is just zip this flange off here in this crease so it's all nice and clamped down well, both ends. It's not going to deform probably because it's on a flat surface. This is going to give me some how better to actually lock it in. Right, walk around there, I won't throw sparks at you. looking at it I can leave it clamped on here so this sill is not even right for this job this is the sliding door sill but they only provide sliding door sills you cannot buy a complete new sill for a transit so what do you do you buy the nearest possible match dice it up to suit away we go right I'm going to take it off on this bend here now Okay, so nominal size, cut down, ready to go. No, it's not. So we can see there's lots of furry edges on it. We need to take those back, clean them up. The worst thing about these panels, most panels come in paint. For some reason, these have all been supplied galvanized, which is lovely for corrosion on a vehicle, but I need to weld them in. They're weld-in panels. Galvanizing leaves a nice thick coating of zinc. Zinc flares, it does all sorts of unpleasant things when you try and weld it. So why would you galvanize a repair panel? 
I don't know. Anyway, we're going to clean it up, take some of the galvanizing off so it doesn't flare so much when I weld it, it doesn't spit, and then we'll see whether it fits. Not a given, by the way. Flat disc, taking off those hairy bits, cleaning it up so we don't have to burn those off as a welder, which you can do. Terrible, terrible practice, and we'll get a better fit with this if it's not. So that's the outside there. Let's just take some of this galvanizing off, bring it back to shiny metal without cutting our fingers. Okay, let's go and see how it fits. <laughs> can I use that to sort my toenails out? You can, and I have before now dealt with split nails. Not recommended though. Okay, so we have the hole, which is going to be cut out a bit more here because we don't want that horrible metal flapping around. And we can see from here, oi. That fits kind of okay. That's definitely the top. So we're probably gonna be able to hold that in place. I can possibly just take that corner off a bit. It needs just cleaning up there because it's not right. So let's take that back over. Okay, so I'm gonna tidy this up and then we've got the panel, which I've cut down a little bit. It should now fit quite nicely in there with a bit of pressure. So obviously I need to just clean this up around here and then we're good to go. So let's take this feathery metal out here with this and away we go. The noise in the background by the way, kettle, tea, important, running. So we can now perk some of this unpleasantness out of here and then we're going to swap here on the binder and just take some more of the uh, paint off so we can actually weld to bare metal. Why, why can't you weld to paint? Like what's... It really doesn't like it, so I need good, good conductivity through from the earth of the welder into the van, so it's got to be to the uh, metal. Paint, don't conduct. I can burn it off a bit, but I can't go all the way through factory paint to weld it on. It gives a nice clean weld. We'll set light to it less too. Okay, all right, I'm just, the kettle's just boiled, so I'm Tea. just, just yes. going to... So you see, the thing is, is I might be holding this here camera phone, but importantly, and I think more importantly, is I'm making the tea. Okay, so I'll ground a bit more down. You'll see up here, there's some white stuff that's slightly nefarious. Someone's not this and filled it in with body filler. So we're gonna actually ignore that because it's far enough out of the way we don't need to worry about it. Hopefully there's gonna be no nasties. Hopefully it won't burn too much. We'll see how we get on. Also, we have tea, which is ideal. So okay. what's, the, what's the safety equipment you're going to be using when you're doing some welding here? Gloves, as I mentioned. We also have an auto darkening mask. Mine is just here and we have one for the camera. So if everything goes a bit sci-fi like that, it's so that the camera and Simon don't get archive. So we've got the welder around here. We we'll use an Argo Shield light, which is a mix of CO2 and argon, just to shroud the welding. We have a little bodywork MIG here, which I think is set far enough down. We did a little test piece earlier, and you can see that. So that's the galvanizing coming off there, all that feathery rubbish that's just on my finger there. The zinc burns off, and that's why it's such a pain in the backside that we've got galvanized panels. But there, it is what it is. Okay, so, hat off, goggles off. 
head torch off, mask on. I'm not going to use clamps here because it's really difficult to actually clamp it on, so instead what I'm going to do is use my hands. Hence, we are into welding gloves, because otherwise I'm just going to wind up burning my hands. So, panel, feathery bits inside. We're going to tap this in place to start with, make sure it's vaguely right, and then go with a bit more. Right, so. It's not Earth, Simon. We need to earth it or nothing will happen. So that's an educational instructional lesson for anyone me. who wants to do this sort of stuff, or indeed yourself, and for me too. We'll uh, come back to this when it's all earthed properly. Right, now we're earthed. We can try and hold this vaguely in the right place. I'm gonna be muffled here, but hey, everyone's talking through masks at the moment, so. steady hands. There on the pillar. That pillar is going to be a pain in the backside, but not in there. And a little hole. Right, so. Checking the gaps, we have gaps, so I'm going to need to get a hammer and just tap that in a bit. Not a big hammer, a little tapping hammer of the type I have just over here. Toffee stick, but very useful for welding. So that's got us in. No mask because I'm a cowboy, but eyes closed. Terrible, terrible practice. We shouldn't do this. But we've now secured that where it needs to be on the top, we're going to go on to the bottom. Pushing it up again, just trying to make sure the gap's as small as possible. So we're not trying to weld air to air. Lovely job. Right, time to start stitching. So I'm not going to go all the way around quickly. I'm going to do it in stages to try and reduce wiggle. Okay, so you might be able to hear us, you might not, because there's a fan whirring in the welder. Hopefully it's not too loud. Now we've tacked that on, gobbed it on badly, I now need to run around the outside. Now the wiggle I spoke about in the last video is as you weld metal it expands and then contracts. So if I was doing a really precise job on this, I'd be in all sorts of trouble. But this is an old transit, so we just need to get this in here reasonably well without blowing too many holes and then we can flap the welds back, chuck some paint on, this job's done. So. I was going to say, did you put a hole in it? Did that happen? There might be a hole just here on the corner, which is always going to be the pain in the ass bit, but it's okay. We can fill that up with weld, so we're going to do that whilst trying to avoid the filler up the top here. Right. I'll come back to a safe distance. Good man. Get your mask out for your camera, and I'll fire some of this in here. So it's not continuous, it's just popping in, stopping, having another go. Because that way, we shouldn't blow too many holes. And we should get an MOT spec repair, which of course is a continuous well. There you can see it's on fire. Some people may say it's a good thing in a transit. Not me at the moment. It's gone out, so it's all good. Always 
do this with ramp. It's too far up. Am I moving it down? Yes! Because I'm standing on my tiptoes. So I can do that. It's still on fire, yeah? It's out now. It's all good. Right. Back on with the weld. Hang on, hang on. Just, uh, we'll, we'll assume that you're going to carry this on and it'll, we'll come back to it when it's done. Good call. Cool. How's it going? Couple of holes, not unexpected. It's not too badly on fire. We've got a bit of smoke coming out here. We might just have a quick look underneath. There's no fire under there, so that's okay. Is it maybe smoke or is it the steam coming from that beautiful cup of tea? No, that's smoke. Oh. So we've got a stitch along here, stitch here, stitch here around the corner and all the way along there. There's the hole. There's another one at the corner here. Surprise, right at the lowest bit. And another one at the corner here. But, all in all, it's a gobby weld, but it's not lovely metal. We're doing okay. How's it looking, Thomas? It's not looking bad. We might just get the wire brush and see how much filler there actually is in there. The heat will have popped a lot of it off underneath. Wire brush. Ah, now there is quite a bit of smoke there. It's okay. It'll clear. Right, come here. So. You can see where we bubbled the paint here because heat rises um, and there's a thick line of filler just there. So I'm just going to use the brush to chew that out. And there we go. Someone was very proud of their van at some point and put it into a body shop to get a small ding taken out and they leathered the filler in all along here. But it's okay, we burnt it out. All good. Patch is good. A little bit of work to do around here because we've got a hole right on the corner there. Not surprising, but this is actually going okay. So I'm just gonna grind some more of this off with the wire brush and we'll see where we are. Check for any holes and then we'll flat this back a bit. Just to tidy it up, it's not gonna get any filler. It's a transit van. If I was a professional, I might well flat this all back, put filler over it, make it pretty, but this is just an MOT pass weld. It just needs to be functional and solid. Okay, right, so I've finished off this welding. You can see it's very gobby here because we wound up with not very much metal in this corner, so I've had to build it up again, but that's okay, that's built up. We've got some quite gobby stuff just to, because of the quality of the metal. It's not good. We've got this filler interfering with it as well. Bit of fire, lovely street marks up here. So now I'm just going to grind some of this back just to tidy it up, and then we'll grab some paint on it. Right, to the grinder. Some people might say it's a transit van. Do you need to actually tidy it up? Yes, because there are sharp bits on here which will rust and trigger more rot in this. So if I make it flat and then paint it, the paint gets over everything, it should stay good for some time. Interesting. But, as Doug's attorney, I recommend he sells it six months after the MOT. Because otherwise, I'm going to be back here in 12 months' time. It's going to be worse because once the rot gets in these things, it keeps on going. We've flattened a lot of the big lumps off. There's still some I can feel just here that I'm going to take down and then we'll get onto this corner and clear that up. Uh, 
How's it feeling now? That's quite nice and flat. The other good thing that we can see here, there are a few pot marks where the weld's been a bit porous because we've not got enough gas going over it. Mostly though, they're nice solid welds, so I'm happy with that. Um, we just need to clean up this bit here, take a few lumps off down here, and then we can throw some paint at it. Okay, so that's that flatted back. Um, it's pretty much cleaned up as we want it, so we're gonna throw some paint at it. We're not being fussy here. Again, it's a transit. It just needs to be good enough for the MOT. So, on with the paint. There is a very balanced, a very delicate balancing act here, which is between getting good penetration, everyone loves penetration on welding, and not blowing holes. And that's a real challenge here. Some of it's a bit spattery here because exactly that problem. Metal goes very thin just here, so you can see it's a bit gobby. But it'll do. Right, let's attack it with some uh, uh, weld through zinc rich primer. Is that available at all good automotive? All good automotive stores, ideally a local one, although you can get it in Halfords, I believe. Now we've finished spraying, just a quick squirt upside down to empty the tube, so it won't gum up in between the spraying. So basically, that's that repair done. It's all right though, I've got another one to do here, and quite a lot of sill missing here. So this is gonna need a section all the way down here, as well as the inside. Um, this was a bit hopeful cutting that out. We're probably going to wind up zipping this off here and then putting the whole panel with the flange on from here. Just, you can see the yellow chalk. This is the MOT man's failure marks, the yellow chalk. So, one done, next one onwards. Next section, back section, bit tricky. Can put hole and through. So this is all obviously gone. Um, I'm just gonna clean this up a bit here and here to start with, probably here as well. And then we're gonna take this out probably back to about here, just so I've got a tab at the end here that I can actually attach things to and get the patch in here reasonably accurately and without too much, making too much of a mess. So let's get this ground back. That's the cut brush. It takes it back nicely, but it's also getting rid of all of the under seal which has been put on here from a previous repair. So let's just go down through here and hack that off, leaving ourselves a spot. That was quite a simple job, wasn't it? Well, there wasn't much metal left. We can see here, not a lot at all, and you can see where it wastes away to nothing just here. Relatively simple, you've got to be quite bold sometimes, that was reasonably bold. We're going to have to be quite delicate here though, because you can see there is virtually no metal there. But you know, we'll be okay. Okay, so because this is solid, and I'm leaving this, we can't just drop the patch in over that, because it just won't fit. So what I'm going to do is line it up with the reasonably good metal, and then I'm going to go underneath and round here, and just mark it here. So I'm gonna take that flange off. You can see it's marked there. So once I've zipped this corner off, it will sit back into it better and we should get a better fit. So I'm gonna take that over the bench now and just cut that down. But wouldn't it be easier to just cut this bit off? No, because this is the corner of the van. So you've got quite a lot of joints here. It comes down here on the outside. It comes out to it from the wheel arch as well. Oh, there's another repair there. Um, so. 
because of the number of joints that are here, I want to leave the good metal to make sure I'm repairing it soundly. And also it doesn't wander off too much from where the line of the sill is, because we've already got a bit of a drop here, which I'm moderately concerned about. I can probably make that up. It doesn't really matter again. This ain't concourse. To the bench with the T, which only has a small quantity of under seal in it. Oh. All adds to the flavour. Oh yes, chewy. So, uh, where are we now with this? Well, mm. minor issue. Yeah. So, I cut this down here, didn't spot this small gaping hole here. So although we've welded this in okay, uh, except for that, but that's been hit with some weld, so it's actually thickened the edges up. Now it's cooled down, I'll be able to go back and fill that in. But how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to patch, extend the patch with another patch, which is that little coin of metal there, which I'll now burn in as the next step. So just to cover off how we're going to finish up the repair, because we're probably not going to video that, behind here there's an inner sill which drops down. It's a flat bit of metal. Everything's continuous line. You're not going to be able to see much there, but you can see missing good metal welded in here already. Everything's welded in continuous line, except for this flange, which is going to actually be, I'm going to imitate um, spot welding. Let's go around the other side. I'll show you a bit already done in the best Blue Peter kind of way. So this corner I had to rebuild quite a lot of. Um, there's not much light here, but you should be able to just about pick out dot, 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 dot. So two flanges together, drill holes, hit this with quite a lot of heat so you actually burn through to the other side. And if we come round to the outside, you might be able to see a bit better. You can see we've gone through and you can see where the galvanizing on the panel has flared on each of those, which shows we've got good penetration. It's actually put that together quite nicely. That's a good solid corner now, so happy days on that repair. I can move on to the prescribed area later, which is gonna be that sizable chunk of metal, which is gonna need stitching in, zipping up, but well, that's a job for tomorrow, probably. So, that's next steps on the next pack. So uh, we've got this little fiddly bit here. That bit there, which I cut out earlier, which I'm gonna stitch on there. So what I've done, because I can still get access behind here, I can use a clamp. So I could hold it on with my finger and try and get it on there, but instead we're using a clamp because it closes it up nice and tight. And that way I don't have to hold it. I can just put it there. My unsteady hands will be all right to go around the edge of it. I haven't ground all of the paint back here, which is a bit of a naughty thing, but at the point that we've welded this on, the paint will probably have burnt off and that will be okay to weld, so we don't need to worry about it. Halfway around, I'm probably going to stop and just use my toffee stick again to get that nice and cuddly too, so we can weld it in nice and tight on the original metal, finish that repair off. These, uh, these little clamps, by the way, uh, you mentioned them earlier, uh, very, very handy clampettes. Someone they are just... clampettes, I think that would be a reasonable description of them. They aren't very big, but they're so useful and they were so cheap. And everyone loves a clamp, right Findlay? I thought we were home free on this, so I flattened back the welding. I have found quite a lot of filler again here on this seal here. Now, is it filler or is it Ford just dosing the paint on and letting it run down? Who knows, it's 16 year old, it may have been done really early in its life when someone's just run something down the side here. Don't know, but someone's put a lot of white stuff in here. Anyway. So I was just cleaning up the welds. Um, a hole appeared here where I took the filler back. So I welded that up, we filled that in. And then you can see here, just where the last bit of the filler's gone, we've got another hole. So I've just got to fill that one in. There's another hole I've spotted down there where the metal's precariously thin. So we'll have the power right down, fill that in, fill that in. The danger with these is, as you heat it up, the metal burns back. And that's why this is already quite long here. So I've chased it a little bit. Hopefully we'll be able to catch that in one. Odds on we won't, we'll see how we get on. So the, the, the hole appeared because what? The huh? filler was over it and the filler is sitting on top of it, holding the moisture against it. So it will rot from the inside out or alternatively from the back of the sill as well. But because it's got that layer of moisture over it, it will rot quicker than just painted stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll get out of your way. So if you look where I've started here, you can see it's made the hole bigger, but now what we've got is we've hardened up the edges with just a bit of weld flashed around there. Hopefully with the next hits, I'll be able to get that filled in, build it back up and there'll be no hole. There's now no 
blow hole, there's a big lump of metal, but we can flat that back. It'll be a continuous section now, so we should be glorious there. So that's all good. Is that a... Uh... No, it's not. And neither is on fire. Okay. okay, so that's done. It's flatted back. We managed to fill the holes there. Um, it's got a light dosing of uh, primer on it as well. So as far as we're concerned, that patch is done. So that's us about done this evening. Simon, thank you very much for holding the camera and not stealing the show entirely with your tea making. Um, I'm probably going to be back here tomorrow night, maybe with Doug, who actually owns the van. So uh, we'll... Oh, welcome back. Um, I haven't done much videos this evening because I've been on it trying to get some of the repairs finished on the van. I have Doug holding the camera. Doug's so tall, the camera's probably a lot higher than last night, but steady. Um, so we've moved um, round to this bit in the wheel arch, which we, uh, I think, mentioned last night, but I couldn't do last night because uh, I needed someone in the van, and ideally the owner of the van, to make sure it didn't catch light inside, especially as there's a drum kit in there, which Doug's quite precious about. So, we have a curved bit here. Well, how do we make the curved bit? Well, we start with a flat bit, put a, put a 90 degree bend on it, and then what we do is, you can see here, cut a whole load of slots in it, and then it makes the metal very easy, relatively easy, to actually bend to fit. So we've gone out here. Last night, you may remember, we actually wound up with a bit which I hadn't done enough for. So I've gone slightly over here to try and make sure we don't wind up with any wasted metal and problems. I'm gonna start here, tack it, and then push it in and weld it up. So that's the next steps on this repair. Hello, right. Major fires avoided. Doug was very busy up there. We did uh, stop quite a bit just to uh, irrigate it because there's a plywood floor in the van. The important thing really is to keep it very wet, keep the temperature down. So having tacked around there, I'll put a photo up of that. You can now see what I've done is continuous bead all the way around here and then underneath. Doug, if you could just come down and let me grab that light. You'll see where all the V's were in the metal. We've actually got welds going out and then we've got a nice continuous bead around there. A nice, it's not a nice continuous bead, but it's a continuous bead, which is the important thing for the MOT. So that is another repair done. Quite a tricky one because it's quite tight and you really do need someone on fire watch. Hello, you don't get me in front of the camera now. You get me behind it because I am on my own. So this is the final repair to the van that I've got to do. It's the front step. I've said in another tweet, this is quite a notorious area for these vans. And what I've actually had to do here is go in and at the moment I'm just grinding back. You can see the spot welds there from production. So I'm probably gonna seam weld along the top of that, which is why I've cleaned the under seal off there, just to gun that in there nicely. The biggest issue is just here and you can see that there, it's not the right shape. So someone's clouted that on a pavement or jacked it at some point earlier in its life. And what that's done is deformed the sill probably quite a long way out. So I'm going to have to probably get a slide hammer on that and just bop it down a bit. And then hopefully the section which we have, so I started cutting down, which is just here, will weld in reasonably easily. I've got some holes to drill so I can puddle weld along the sill here because this is still quite good metal. Um, and then we'll have this off so we can get a nice flush fit tight up in here and we should be good okay we'll see how we get on right we're uh, nearly ready to get this front sill replacement stitched in you can see it's clamped in place by a couple of mole grips um, we've got a tab coming down here we're going to attach it to and then we can go along here and stitch it in along the top and quite a lot of places there one moment so on the outside what I've actually done is gone through and drilled holes so I can puddle weld it in and on the bottom, there's a bit more clamping to be done up here and down here. That's going to move up quite nicely. And then there's a slightly a nasty looking bit of metal, which is a nice angle, which is actually going to fit in there and just close that wheel arch up because there's quite a gap. Let's just move the light up here so you can see that. So there's not a very nice gap in there, but we'll have that closed in. And, uh, and hopefully that will be the welding done on the transit.